Hello, friends. Look who has the pointer today. <laughs> All right, with that being said, we're just going to go ahead and start. Um, so, we have been talking about prepositions. So, what I want you to do is, if you remember what a preposition is, find somebody in your house and tell them what a preposition is. If you don't remember, I know. This mess knows. A preposition is a word that tells you where something is. So let's look at this picture right here. Let me use my pointer. Please do. I wish you would. Two point to the words for you. The B is blank the table. Where is the B compared to this table? Where is it? On the table. The B is on the table. So on is our preposition. Preposition. Good. All right. What about now? The Ooh. B has oh, changed oh, oh. location. Okay. 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 Go. The B is blank the table. Where is the B? Under. The B is under the table. All right. What about this one? The B is blank the table. Where is the B? This one's harder. This one is harder. But it was under and on. Now I think it is beside the table. The B is beside the table. Good. So beside is our preposition. So some more prepositions are in, with, on, up, to, by, near, around, under, over, beneath. So all of these words help tell us more about nouns and where they are located. So what I want you to do right now is I want you to quiz your family about something. I want you to take your pencil and I want you to put your pencil somewhere near, on top, under the table. And I want you to ask your family, where is my pencil? And you should have them say under the table or on the table. And you can tell them that, yes, those words are prepositions. Oh, 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 are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, I am, I am, I'm, yes, I'm, yes. I'm, we're going to read. So our job is to listen for phrases about where these animals are or where they uh, or what they do um, to describe. We have to listen for phrases, but you're going to listen for the prepositions of where something is. I'm ready. If you're a platypus, you use your nose to dig in the mud. Ooh, I heard in. Where is the platypus going to dig in the mud? So in is my preposition. All right. What about the hyena? If you're a hyena, you find your next meal with your nose. Oh, because I am going to figure out uh, with. That doesn't tell me where. That one's hard. But that's the prepositional phrase. So I'm using my nose as a hyena to find my next meal. Okay, what about this one? If you're an elephant, you use your nose to give yourself a bath. Oh, this one's hard. Um, I am going to say the preposition is to. The preposition is to. What do you think? I don't think that that one actually has a preposition. <laughs> Let's go back and look. Miss Metz is right. Go ahead and say it. Woo -woo. Okay. But are we finding the preposition or the prepositional phrase? To give yourself a bath. 
see what it's like to have a teacher that is right and a teacher that is not. Well, kids, don't you just miss us? All of you guys know that Mr. Hatfield <laughs> is typically more right than Miss Nets, and that's okay. That's okay. We'll give her this. All right. The next, if you're a mole, you use your nose to find your way underground. I hear the word tip. Where we're going to find. Where are we going to? To find underground. If you're an alligator, you breathe through your nose while hiding in the water. Oh, I hear two of these. Through your nose and in the water. Woo! Man, I'm going to have two prepositional phrases. So remember, a preposition tells you where the noun is located. So now we are ready to move on. You all are going to have your book in just a little bit because we're going to use it um, to fill out lesson 24 papers. So you can go back through and see if you can find some prepositions that we just talked about in the book as well. So now we are going to move on to 24. And while Mr. Hatfield gets that set up, we'll trade spots and I am going to show you what our jobs are. So remember our big question, our telescope question that we are going to um, be able to answer by the end of this module is what can we discover about animals unique features so what are we finding out about those special parts of the animal then our focus question or our binocular question for the end of this book is going to be how do animals use the same feature or the same special part in different ways and then our job for today our microscope we've got to really examine this question is what is the essential meaning or what did the author want us to learn from young hair? And you're going to say, Miss Smith, that wasn't a book. That was the painting. Yep. We are going to look very closely and find out what the author wanted us to know about that painting. So like Miss Smith said, our focus question, our binocular question is how do animals Use the same feature in unique way. Oh, Mr. Hatfield, I noticed the word unique. Hmm. What do we think that word unique means? What do you think? What do you think unique means? I think it means special. I agree. So we're finding out certain parts uh, are used in special ways. So I think we should write the word unique over here on our chart in green, unique. So unique means special. All right, let's keep going. All right, and also, Ms. Metz said earlier that our microscope question, what is the essential meaning of young hair? And like we already, Said, young hair, it's not a book. It's the painting. So let's look at young hair. So what are some of the features of the hair that you see? What are some of the features? Well, I remember features means this, the parts. So I see ears. Mm -hmm. I see feet. I see nose. Eyes. Legs. What are some of the special features that you see? Ooh, some of you might have said whiskers. That's a good one, too. Very good. All right. Okay. Well, how does the artist make this hair seem real? I know some of you the other day, what you noticed about this painting was that it looked real. So how does the artist make it look real? Ooh, I heard some of you say the texture. Oh, I like how you remembered that word from mm -hmm. yesterday. The texture that the artist used makes it look soft. And we know that hairs are probably soft. 
uh, something that I noticed is that he has made it look, the lines that he drew has made it look like real instead of a stick figure or things like that. Even the different colors, something that oh. I'm noticing, it looks, the different colors make it look like maybe a yep. light is shining on it or it's in the sunlight outside somewhere. Yep. So those are all great things. Okay, well, what about this one? What do you see that's unique about this painting? What's interesting or unique about this painting? Oh, I think what's interesting is that it looks real. Like, that's a really hard thing as an artist to draw something that, or paint something that looks real. And so this looks like it could actually jump out. Right. We all know that I can't draw. I wouldn't be able to, to do that or paint that. Um, so that is something that's very interesting and unique to this painting. So now what I want you to do is look at these two pictures, these two illustrations. What's the difference between the two? What are things that are different between this picture and this one? Well, I'm sure some of you are going to say that this looks real and this looks fake. Yeah. And some of you are probably going to say this is not the same animal as that. Yep, that's right, too. Something that I'm noticing is there's a whole lot more detail in this than there is here. Think back to when we did the turkey at Thanksgiving and we had to draw the turkey. And Mr. Hatfield told you, hey, add some detail to it. So this reminds me of maybe the turkey that we drew. And this reminds me of the reindeer that we drew the other day on um, at our Christmas party. So in my mind, it's the detail that is different about the two things. Which brings me right to my <laughs> next question. I'm so smart. Wow. So why is using detail in illustrations important? So I want why you to, do we do it? Yeah, find somebody at home and tell somebody, why do we need to use details in our illustrations? Well, I think one of the reasons we need to use details is because it adds to it. It gives the reader or the person who is looking at the picture more to go on and to understand a little better. This, I don't know. It's a chicken. I can see that it's a chicken, but I don't know where it is. I don't know what it's doing. I don't know who it's with. Here, I can see that these platypi or these platypuses are on a log or a tree that's maybe fallen at a pond because I can even see what looks like a snake, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I see lily pads. I see reeds in the back. I can even see the webbed feet and the um, maybe bristles of the of the bill. So I see much more detail and I'm able to understand more about this picture than I am this one. Right. So now what we are going to do is we're going to draw our own picture of an animal. So on your whiteboards, go ahead and get your whiteboards, your marker and your eraser. And you are going to draw a picture with as many details as you can to your picture. So the animal that we wrote about. So think about that. Remember, we wrote about the feature. So if you wrote about tails, there were different animals in our book that told you about what they did with their tails. Or if you wrote about feet, there are different animals in that book that told you about what they did with their feet. You have to think about those animals, and in just a second, you can use your book, and you can add more detail after that, but we want you to draw your picture of those animals using their feature in a unique way. Okay. So, now that we have pictures and we know why that we do it, why is it important to add detailed illustrations to our writing? So why would it be important for us to have a detailed illustration with our writing? Well, I think I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. Think about that chicken and those platypuses. So in my mind, 
if the more detail that I have as a reader now, I can say, oh, I see the webbed feet that the author was talking about, or, oh, I see the bristles on the bill, or, oh, I see the spurs on the back of the leg that they talked about that could be poisonous. Because the more detail you add, the more as a reader, I'm going to understand what the author wrote about. Right. So it's going to make it more interesting. Yep. My drawings are not very interesting. I'll tell you that right now. But the young hair, that's pretty interesting. Yep. It's also going to teach the readers more, like Miss Metz just said. We are going to be able to see more detail about the animal, which is going to let us learn more about the animal. So now I want you to find someone at home, and I want you to tell them which animal's tail from our book is your favorite. So I'm going to open up to the tail part, and I want you to tell someone which... Whoop, which one is your favorite tail? Okay, so you told somebody at home which animal's tail is your favorite. What's your favorite? Uh, I think I'm going to go with the chameleon. The chameleon's tail. No. Hmm. Why the chameleon's tail? Oh, sorry. It's the lizard, the lizard? not the okay. chameleon. Yeah. It's the lizard's tail. I think the lizard's tail because that's a cool feature that it can break off when it's trying to get away from uh, a predator. And so then it can escape while leaving its tail behind. I'm going to go with the giraffe tail. Oh! I'm not a big fan of bugs. So if I don't have to use my hands and I just have a tail that's back there just smacking flies away, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. So now we have this paper. I'll show you real quick or Miss Metz will. So as you can see, we have where it says animal. So you're going to pick an animal and then you're going to give us two features of that animal. Now let's talk about that. Remember, a feature is the... A particular part of an animal. And so we just did that on young hair. We touched and looked at all the different features of the hair. So you have to do the same thing. You've got to tell um, the feature, two features of the animal that you choose. So the example, just for example, is the giraffe. Okay. We know giraffes have long necks. Yep. So that's one feature of a giraffe. Our second feature is that they have hair. So those are two features of a giraffe. So that's something that you're going to have to find in the book is pick your animal and then you're going to pick two different features about that animal. Now, the next thing that you have is once you have figured out your animal and the two features, you actually have to draw that animal in this box. So once you have that drawn, then you have to complete this sentence with your features. Now, I'm going to read this sentence. It says, my animal is blank, and it has blank and blank. So, with the example of the giraffe, we're going to say, my animal is a giraffe, and it has a long neck and hair. So, we know that we said the giraffe has a long neck and it has hair. My animal is a giraffe. It has a long neck and hair. So that is what our completed sentence would sound like. And your picture must match what your complete sentence says. Because remember, we've been talking about that. That's a text feature. This would be like your caption and this would be like your picture. So if you talk about a giraffe, you have to have a giraffe here. You can't have the lizard. So if I talked about a lizard... I can't write a giraffe down here. So you're going to draw whatever you is your favorite animal, and then your sentence has to match that. You talked about a giraffe, and one of your features is a long neck. Are you going to give it a short neck? No. No, you've got to show that it has a long neck. Now, if you, you said it has hair, are you going to give it feathers? No. No, because giraffes don't have feathers. So you're going to have to show us what you have written down here by drawing a picture. Are these both of these papers, paper one and paper two, are in your Go notebook? They are stapled. 
You need to get those out and that's what you are going to work on. We are also going to make sure on Seesaw that the book is uploaded so that way you can go through the book since you don't have it at home and you can look through, decide what your favorite animal is and write its two features and that way you'll have an excellent drawing to match its two features. So uh, keep that and you can return it when you get back to school after the break.